Have you ever pondered the mind-bending concept that we're all voyaging through space-time at the speed of light? Strap in, because today we're embarking on an exhilarating journey through the mysteries of the cosmos. Picture this, an aeroplane soaring through the sky, each movement meticulously measured. But what if we shift our perspective and focus on the shadow it casts? What secrets lie within its fleeting movements? Join me as we unravel this celestial enigma. From the eerie stillness of the first second to the electrifying acceleration in the next, we'll delve into the fascinating world of shadow physics. But here's the twist. Imagine if those shadows were inhabited by two-dimensional beings, unaware of the third dimension. As we explore their perspective, we'll uncover the profound implications of our own understanding of space and time. So grab your cosmic compass and let's navigate through the depths of the universe together. But wait, there's more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our cosmic community for a voyage filled with endless discoveries. Get ready to expand your horizons and dive into the captivating realm of space science. Let's ignite our curiosity and embark on this cosmic odyssey. Now you and I know what's really going on. We understand that really that object is traveling at the same speed in three dimensions. But since that shadow only represents a two-dimensional projection, that's why that shadow will have variable speed. But they don't know that. In fact, if they could see that shadow long enough and the plane kept on moving and twisting and turning, but all the while maintaining that constant speed of one meter per second, they will eventually realize that shadow keeps moving, but it will have a maximum speed of one meter per second, and they would be wondering why that would be the case. In fact, they would realize that in this world, everything has a speed limit. Their universe has a speed limit of one meter per second. Nobody can break through it. They'll postulate it but they'll have absolutely no idea why that's happening. Just like those two-dimensional shadow people, we think that there's a speed limit in our universe, the speed of light, and nothing can go faster than light. But maybe that's because we're seeing a three-dimensional shadow of what's really happening in four-dimensional space-time. Maybe everything in the space-time is moving just like that aeroplane at a constant speed, always at the speed of light, but because we are seeing a projection of it in our universe, we perceive it as a speed limit. But maybe it's not the case, maybe everything is moving at the speed of light. So we can now begin to see where this idea stems from, right? But we are far away from accepting this idea as of now. Because remember, this is science. Unlike in religion, we don't just accept ideas. In fact, one of the best ways to deeply understand science is to be a skeptic and always try to figure out what if. Try to counter it, try to refute it from different, different angles. So that's what we'll do. We should at this point look at this example and say, cool story, bro. But how can we validate this? I mean, is there a way that these shadow people can actually somehow validate that from their perspective? that indeed that there's a bigger world out there and objects may be traveling at a constant speed? Because if these shadow people cannot validate it, then we have no idea of validating it, right? And then it'll just remain a story with no reason to have any confidence in it. So this is where Louise, who has written a book named Relatively Visualized, where this plain example was mentioned, says maybe they can, I'm like, how? How could these shadow people ever hope to understand that there could be a bigger world out there? How would they do that? The key over here is to imagine a second shadow on a wall. Perpendicular to this first shadow, now I know what you're thinking at this point, I'm also having the same thought. Louise, what's the point of having to look at this shadow? Because these folks are stuck in their two dimensions, right? They will not be able to perceive the shadow or look at that shadow, so what's the point in looking at that? And Lewis says, you're right. But remember, just like us, we are stuck in our three dimensions and we cannot see time, but we can still measure the flow of time with our clocks. Similarly, what if they cannot see this shadow, 
but somehow they can measure how quickly that shadow is moving, they can measure the speed of that shadow. Somehow. Okay? Then would they be able to, you know, use the speed of this shadow, and then use the speed of this shadow, which they can easily see, and then piece it all together, and see there's something deeper going on over here. Let's find out if we can do. So now let's relook at this whole thing in its whole glory. Now, by looking at a couple of shadows, and let's keep track of both the shadows, speed of both the shadows. In the first one second, this shadow is at rest. But look, this shadow moves completely one meter. It is moving at the maximum speed, so this is at rest. But this shadow, the vertical shadow, is moving at a maximum speed. In the next one second, this shadow starts moving. Its speed increases, but its speed decreases. I mean, this distance is now a little smaller than one meter. So you see, this speed increases, this speed decreases, and in the last one second look, the horizontal speed is maximum, but the vertical speed has become zero, and so by looking at this, they will be seeing that there is some connection between the vertical speed and the horizontal speed. When the horizontal speed increases, the vertical speed decreases. When the horizontal speed decreases, the vertical speed increases. There is some connection between them, and what is that connection? Well, the connection is if this arrow represents the horizontal speed, and this arrow represents the vertical speed, we can now see that they form a right-angled triangle with the total three-dimensional speed, which means if we label them, let's call H the horizontal V for vertical, and we know this speed is always one, because that speed is always constant, one meter per second, then just by using Pythagoras, we know that the squares of these speeds should add up to give us one. Wow, what an eye-opening journey through the depths of space and shadow physics. We've uncovered mind-bending concepts, from the mysterious perspectives of the shadow people to the profound implications for our understanding of the cosmos. As we reflect on our voyage, it's clear that every discovery brings us closer to unraveling the secrets of the universe. Just like the shadow people piece together their world, we're on a quest to unlock the mysteries of space and time. But this is just the beginning of our cosmic adventure. Join our community as we continue to explore the wonders of space science and dive deeper into this captivating niche. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more mind-blowing content that will expand your horizons and ignite your curiosity. Together, let's embark on a journey of discovery, one video at a time. Until next time, keep looking up and never stop exploring the infinite wonders of the cosmos.